Welcome once again to This Week in Comics Horror. It's where I take a look at the weekly offering of horror comics. Remember, this isn't a set of reviews, just a list of what you'll find when you hit the shops this week in Comics Horror, February 21st, 2024. Welcome back to M.L. Miller Frights. I'm M.L. Miller. Before we begin, please do me a favor and punch that like button down below. Share this video with all of your social media addicted pals. Click subscribe to this channel and ring that bell for notifications. Let's check out This Week in Comics Horror, February 21st, 2024. This Week in... Ass, titties, ass and titties. Ass, ass, titties, titties, ass, and titties. Celebrates the female form as depicted on horror comic book covers. We've got three cheesecakey comics with solid stories inside this week, starting with Xenoscope and Pat Shan's Van Helsing annual Bride of the Night, where Liesel Van Helsing takes on the daughter of Dracula. I know, I know, that cover isn't really that cheesecakey at all. But feast your peepers on this curvy cover. Oh my. Not to be outdone, Dynamite has its own fair share of bodacious babes adorning the covers. Elvira Meets H.P. Lovecraft number one is from David Avalone and Cooper Ball. If you think this cover features Elvira's best points, check out this cover from none other than Adam Mother Grabbin Hughes. And in Vampirella Dracula Rage number five, Vampy continues to try to get her revenge against the King of Vampires for killing her son. This one's by Christopher Priest and Christian Rosado, but let's get that logo out of the way for you, shall we? Ass and titties. Blood Moon Comics continues to churn out some quality indie horror, and this week, the publisher is releasing three mighty scary books. Ricky Sykes is responsible for both the art and words for Humbaba, number one, a story about a Louisiana swamp and the mutant creatures that inhabit it. Haunted House, a love story, number four, continues to tell a rather sensitive tale of love and loss from the perspective of a haunted house. It's by writer-artist Winston Gambro. And Edie, You Are What Eats You, number two, from Paul Catalanato and Greg Waranchak, seems to be an allegory of sorts about a woman who was abducted and assaulted, leaving her somewhat of a monster afterwards. Man, that cover by Greg Waronchak is some retro EC greatness. Let's check out some indie books in the flavor of horror. Starting off with horror comics number 33, an anthology comic from Antarctic Press. This arc focuses on your favorite classic universal monsters set in different eras from where they belong. It's from Dino Caruso, Sean Richeson, and J.C. Grandet. Every issue of Project Cryptid offers up a glimpse of some kind of urban legend or ancient folklore. In issue number six, it's time for the Chupacabra to take the spotlight. Have you got down with the sickness? I picked up the first issue of this series, and it was pretty creepy. It's about a seemingly normal suburban neighborhood, but the housewives seem to be succumbing to murderous urges. The sickness number four is from writer Lonnie Nadler, and art by Jenna Cha. Red 5 is releasing the last issue of Prometheus in Chains by Rich Davis and Jordan DiRenzo, retelling the classic Frankenstein tale against the backdrop of World War II. Then look at this. We have more independent horror comics on the shelves this week. Man, there are some awesome covers in this week's grouping. Look at this chilling cover from The Crying Boy by Carlos Villa. If the interiors by Bob Moran are half as good, this is going to be one nightmarish little book from Keen Spot and writer Niall O'Rourke, which seems to be a story about a haunted painting, a missing boy, and a mother who will stop at nothing to get him back. I met artist Kelly Williams a few years ago at C2E2 and was impressed with his art back then. In Skeeters from Mad Cave Studio, the artist has upped his game. The creature feature is about a bunch of man-sized mosquitoes tormenting a small town. Fun stuff. And Colin Bunn and artist Jesus Hervas offer up the body horror with surgery addicts, 
unethical doctors, and all kinds of strange medical procedures in an underground hospital. That kind of icky stuff is right up my alley. And not to be outdone, Army of Darkness Forever number 5 from Dynamite Entertainment's cover is outstandingly gruesome. That horrifying close-up on a deadite's face is by Francesco Mattina, and interiors are by Justin Greenwood, with words by Tony Fleeks, as this series picks up in the future where the director's cut of Army of Darkness left off. Another week means another handful of image horror comics. I haven't been able to check out A Haunted Girl yet from Ethan and Naomi Sachs and Marco Lorenzana on art, but man is that cover for issue number four creepy as all get out. The Six Fingers number one is new from Dan Waters and Sumit Kumar. It's about an archaeology student who inexplicably commits a murder, copying the M.O. of a famous serial killer, and now he must decipher why he did it. Sounds like a twisty and turny tale that I just might have to check out. I'm sorry to say that Jeff Lemire's The Bone Orchard Mythos, Tenement, has lost me. I really love Andrea Sorrentino's art, but the story, which is now on its second chapter, feels like it needs a few more resolutions and a little less vague mystery. I might pop back when it's all over and try to read it from the beginning, but not until then. The Walking Dead Deluxe, number 83, once again reprints the original The Walking Dead series, this time in full bloody color. And in this issue, the survivors must do the old douse yourself in innards trick to escape a full-blown zombie herd. Ah, that old chestnut. And Spawn celebrates a mighty 350th issue with series creator Todd McFarlane, Rory McConaville, and Brett Booth, as this issue finally reveals who will take their place at the throne of hell. That's a bitchin' cover on this issue, too, by an artist named Puppeteer Lee. This Week in the Big Two looks at attempts at horror from the tentpoles of the comics industry, Marvel and DC. Only one from DC this week, and it's John Constantine Hellblazer, Dead in America number 2, from Simon Spurrier and Aaron Campbell. In this issue, Constantine suffers from a dead heart in need of a kickstart, and he pals up with Swamp Thing in order to help fix it. Over at Marvel, a bevy of talented writers and artists take on Alien in Black, White, and Blood, telling short stories told only in those colors, which means it's going to be pretty bloody. Predator The Last Hunt begins from writer Ed Brisson and Francesco Mana on art as a woman who lost her parents to the Predators ventures to the game reserve we last saw in Robert Rodriguez's film Predators. And in The Incredible Hulk, writer Philip Kennedy Johnson and artist Danny Earls introduce Hulk to a serial killer with supernatural abilities, which proves to be a harder challenge than it sounds for the Green Goliath. Well, there's a nice crop of horror comics for this week. Surely there's something here that you'll find worth your time and hard-earned money. Let me know which ones look good to you down in the comments. Stuck inside your reality Your doom Oh, your doom Bye. 